This is the pre-calculus spring 2017 ACP preview parametric equation problems, and there are going to be six of them here. This first one we're going to look at is which graph represents the curve given by the parametric equation x equals 3 cosine t and y equals 8 sine t over the interval from 0 to pi over 2. And if we understand radian measure, like if we take this pi over 2, and if we understand radian measure, it might be apparent immediately what the correct answer is. But if not, we can perhaps understand better if we convert this measure in radians to degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi. And pi over pi cancels, and what we get left is 180 divided by 2, which is 90 degrees. And so you can see which rotation, I believe, is 90 degrees. That should be this choice B to the lower left. But in case that's not apparent, we can go and graph parametrically by going to get a graph page in our TI Inspire CX calculator. We Go to menu three, four, graph parametric, and we're going to put in three cosine t for the x equation and eight sine t and then what we have is the uh, time limitation here was going to be through pi out 0 to pi over 2. So we can just put in, we have 0 on the left, and then we can put in pi and divide that by 2. And when we do that, we get this thing right here. And just to change the window a little bit to see better, go to window settings. We're going to go y minimum from negative 10 to y maximum of 10, 10. And yes, we just see this quarter of a ellipse here in the upper right quadrant, which confirms again our correct answer choice B. Next problem two, what is the rectangular form for the curve given by the parametric equations? X equals t plus six and y equals five t minus three. We can go to our calculator again and see which one would best match here. Uh, but what I'm gonna do instead is take this equation here, x equals t plus six. And we're gonna solve for t by subtracting 6 from both sides here. So t is equal to x minus 6. And so if we just go ahead and take this x minus 6 and plug it in for this t right here, that should give us a correct answer. So put in y equals 5 times t minus 6, t minus 6 replacing the uh, x, replacing the t, excuse me, minus 3, we're going to get y equals, using the distributive property, 5t, and we're going to take 5 times negative 6, which would be minus 30, and subtract another 3, so we'll get y equals 5t, minus 33. So our correct answer choice would be A. And again, we could take this in our calculator and look at it. The, the problem with graphing this in a calculator is in the standard viewing page, we're not, uh, graph page, we're not going to be able to see this function very well because of this y-intercept down here at negative 33. Let's go on to problem three, our third problem, which parameter a pair of parametric equations represents a line that passes through points 2 comma 1 and 0 comma negative 3. We can just graph these parametrically here and just see which one we should be able to 
to see quite easily if we just go to tab. I'm going to go back and change this one here to uh, x equals negative 2t. And then we have uh, y equals We have negative 4t plus 3. And again, we have a limited viewing here. I'm going to go back to the two standard 6.28. If we have to go ahead and make the zero lower, we will. We press enter. And we want the points, what were they? 2 comma 1 and 0 comma negative 3. So that would be a y-intercept of, of uh, negative 3. And we don't see it. But 0 comma 3. So that doesn't look right. So that is not our correct answer. We can just go down the list here. Tab. And we'll go with negative 2t and y is negative 8t plus 3. So I'm going to change this 4, 8. Everything else should be the same. So we have, again, the y-intercept of positive 3 and not negative 3. So that one's not going to be working for us either. And then we have 2t and 4t minus 3 here. So 2t not negative 2t. And 4t minus 3. Oops. Put in 4t minus 3. See, I think we got 2t and 4t minus 3. Enter. Okay, we get 0, comma 3, and do we get 2, 1, comma 1? Looks like it. We can trace. Now we have that bottom one. We'll go to trace, menu, trace, graph trace. As I get up here, 2, comma 1. So C is going to be our correct answer. So we just went through the list and graphed parametrically until we found those two points. So that's uh, number three. Next one. Which graph represents the curve given by the equation x equals 3t squared with the parameter t equals the square quantity x minus 2. And here we don't have these things both where we can graph them parametrically. We have x equals 3x, 3t squared. That one we can graph. But the second one, where we have t equals the square root of quantity y plus 2. Y minus 2, rather. And if we square both sides, we get squared here. And squared, <clears throat> we get t squared is equal to y minus 2. <clears throat> and then t squared equals 1 minus 2. And adding 2 to both sides, we get y equals t squared plus 2. So we can graph x yeah. equals 3t squared and y equals t squared plus 2. Okay. So we go over here, x equals 3t squared. And then uh, y equals t squared plus 2.
and we're going to leave the standard uh, time and so forth. So we get this we get this line. Looks like your our y-intercept is two, and we go to our answer choices. And it looks like it could be this one here, D. And if we went and changed our time here, we went to, let's go over here and put in, we'll say negative 6.28, press enter. I don't see anything different here. Oops, let's try it again. Negative 6.28. Okay, let me graph that. Uh, just didn't take hold here for some reason. But anyway, it's going to be answer choice D. Next. Two, what is the rectangular form for the curve given by parametric equations? X equals T squared plus 5T minus 1 and Y equals T plus 1. And what we can do here is we can take this y and plug it in the x. So we put in y equals t plus 1. And we can solve for t. So t is going to be equal to y minus 1. And we can take this y minus 1 and replace t everywhere we see in this x equals equation. So if we do that in these two places here, we're going to come up with x equals quantity uh, y y minus 1 squared plus 5 times quantity y minus 1. And we have this minus 1 over here on the right. And so we can just uh, multiply this out, we're going to get x equals y squared, and we're going to have, when we foil this together, we're going to have, I'll just write it in a box like this, we're going to have is y minus 1, y minus 1, get y squared, minus y, minus y, plus 1. So we're going to get minus 2y out of this guy. So minus 2y plus 1. And so we're going to get plus 5y. And then just, that's a distribution here. We're going to get minus 5, minus 1. And just simplifying from here out, we have plus 1 and minus 1 cancel each other out. And we're left with x equals y squared. We have minus 2y plus 5y. That'll be plus 3y and minus 5. So our correct answer is going to be C. Okay, the last one we're going to look at here in this set is a parametric equation sports problem. I thought we'd see more samples than this, but there's a couple little complexities in here, and the major one is an uh, inconsistency of, of units. Because we see we have a, a field goal standard, if we read the problem carefully, that is 50 yards distant from the point of kicking. Yet, we have a height of the goal post here in feet, and we're also given an initial velocity of, of 81. feet per second. So 81 feet per second. And the angle of 66 <laughs> degrees, that's not going to be a problem at all. So let's go ahead and, and graph this parametrically. We're going to, I'm going to go ahead and go back here and x equals 81 times 
cosine and we have 66 degrees and we're in radians here and so we have to if we put a degree symbol in here that'll fix that so we're telling the calculator I don't care if this is graphing in radians mode I'm going to make this degrees anyway and we're going to multiply this by T and then for the Y component we have Uh, same type of thing. Now, one thing I want you to do in your test is uh, one of the first things you need to write down is R cosine equals X and R sine equals Y. Okay, times T. And now position due to the force of gravity in feet would be negative 16 T squared. And I'm going to go ahead and change this time thing here back to zero because we're talking about positive time from the kick. And T step, we're going to change this over here to, to uh, point zero three one, which is going to be one tenth of what pi is approximately. And so you just plot enter this and you see the path of the kick initially and we're going to need to really view out to take a good look at and we go to menu window zoom window settings and x minimum of 10 feet will be fine now here's where that 50 yards comes in well 50 yards is we have to worry we're looking at feet so i'm going to put in 170 feet just to make sure we have enough room for a 50-yard field goal kick. So watch out for units on these. Okay, Y minimum of negative 10, that's fine. Y maximum, this is a very steep angle, so it could be a very high kick, could go very high. I'm going to put a Y maximum of 100 feet and press Enter. And so here we have, and so if you look to the right, we have 170 feet at the very right, and 150 feet is where the goal posts are. And so we're going to have to analyze very carefully to see our correct answer. We go to menu, graph, or trace, and graph trace. And so here we are. The ball, we're going to the right here. And it looks like we're reaching a maximum height of about 85, 86 feet. So now we're coming down. And the key thing we're looking for is this X value. We want to look for 150 because that's going to tell us whether or not we have a successful field goal kick. And if we come to 150, 148, okay, we're at 148, and we're still not, and we're below the crossbar because we're at 8.99 feet, so we have missed the field goal kick. And if we go to 152, the next thing over 152, we're 1.83 off the ground, but we can definitely see that we are under the crossbar. Now we we got as far as the cross as as that distance, but not enough to cross. So if we look carefully at our answer choices. The uh, ball does not hit the ground before reaching the goalpost. Uh, the ball passes under the crossbar. Yes, that looks like that's right. And check the other answer to be sure the ball passes over the crossbar. No, the ball hits the crossbar. We probably not. So B is our correct answer in this case. So again, the tricky one on this one is, is conversion of yards. Defeat. So anyway, these would be six problems, and they'll be good representative problems if you're pretty solid on these. You're not going to have any problem on your ACP here and coming up in a couple weeks. Good luck, and thanks for viewing.